before we get started, can I just say something? Thank you for actually setting the clock both times you've booted up the game. Yeah, before I started the stream, it asked me to set the clock again, just like last time. A lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 and call it a day. But you're actually taking the time to get set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's how I know that you care about this experience. You're paying attention. I don't even have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Tell you what. I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see the screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time. You've earned it. All right, I'll let you get back to the video game now. Okay then. Random. Uh, so yeah, I guess we're get, getting right back into it. By the way, there is an, an achievable trophy in this game that if you don't play this game for 10 years, 10 years, and then you come back to it, you'll get a trophy. Why, I don't know, but that's what they decided to do. Until then... We're back to the end is never the end is never the end is loading. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Holy. I need a really good temple and scalp massage right now for crying out loud. This is the story of a man named hey, Stanley. Hey, trophy. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. I'll go ahead and he get sat the recap. at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Sorry. And then one day, Jeez, something God. very peculiar happened. Let's do this. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No oh. one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. There we go. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, well, we're back to things. I uh, have a few ideas of what I can try to do differently this time, aside from the obvious neon sign that says new downloadable content or whatever it said. So, All right, let's do this. Oh, that reminds me. There was a trophy that was regarding a specific room or door. Click on door 430. Click on door 430 five times. And 430 is right over here. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the <laughs> meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right. One, two, three. Four. Oh, oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the trophy? <laughs> Click a door five times? Is that all you think a trophy is worth? No, 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 no. I, got just, I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks? Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Stanley was 
was there on the weekend and didn't realize it. <laughs> That's a possibility. Like, where is everybody? It's the weekend, dude. Go home. Give me my trophy. Maybe I have to finish the game again. I don't know. Oh well. He thinks I'm greedy for winning the trophy. I'm turning off the computers again. Because I can. Oh gosh. All right, let's get a move on. It's the spilled coffee. There's the sign for the new, new content. Not yet, we'll get there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yes, he did. Office. Oh, apologies again. I'm probably not going to be. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Probably not going to be quite as talkative as I usually am. It's kind of a lack of energy. I just didn't want to skip another Friday night stream just because, you know, I was tired or whatever. So, just took some medicine and said, let's just power through it. Ah, oh, yes. The Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Was there nothing here, though? Well, here's the broom. There okay. was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Okay, thank you, narrator. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, excuse me. It's the bathroom again. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, no money. Crisp. It's kind of a combination between like a cereal ad for breakfast cereal and that um, uh, pizza bagel um, commercial. They're like, pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. It's kind of the same jive there. Toilet next to a window. Fair point. You would hope that it's a very high rise building and above all the other ones. Um, now, that's not to say I haven't used a bathroom before with a window, but the window is always like up top. So, but yes, there's no reason for that. Except to air out the bathroom, I guess. How was I able to open this door that one time? I don't even know. I think the game Stepping into his manager's office, me. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, 
Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right. So this uh, this playthrough, we are going to we're gonna get all the way to the entrance to the mind control facility, and then we are going to go to the left where it says escape. We're gonna see uh, see what that's all about. We're not going to ride the elevator multiple times. We already know what happens with that. <sighs> that was so crazy. And if anybody wants to go back and watch that stream and even, like, sift through it and watch their favorite parts even, uh, I did save that stream as a highlight on the Twitch channel. I uh, just haven't gotten around to moving it to the YouTube channel yet, but, but it's there. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay, here's where we diverge off that path. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Nah, surely not. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. But I want to escape. At Very this point, hallway. Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Um. Well, here we go. We straight into a loading screen. <laughs> As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, but oh, plugging no. the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Oh no, there don't do Stanley. it. Don't do it, narrator. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. What? Ah, uh, that wasn't the narrator. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. Uh. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Um, okay. How big is this room, by the way? All right, well, let's go, I guess. What the heck? 
When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? What? Um, nature paintings, clearly. <laughs> Stanley's computer. That's Stanley's office, and here's where we walk in through the beginning, office layout. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered through development, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Oh wow. Yep. Corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. The two doors. The set of the two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parables design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it. An exploration of the, contradict ex of the contradiction this room posed. Just an office thing. Filing cabinets. Office computer. Oh, that one's got solitaire up on it. Nice. Employee database. Selling chart. Office. Some doors. There's the spilled coffee. Oh, here's the buttons. Selection of the sounds used throughout the game room when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. And here's the cre uh, credits. So if Kevin Briding is the narrator, who's the lady we just heard? Um, office. Elevator maintenance room, an early version of the maintenance room. It's just a cubicle wall with the copy machine behind it. Do we go that way or do we go this way or does it matter? They all lead to the same place. Boss's office. There's the office clock. Oh, this is weird. Yeah, it's like a museum of the game. <laughs> the lounge. Underground, an early version of the underground portion of the game. Push the number six. Patient outtakes. Writing the voice of the narrator recorded dialogue for the entire game th roughly th there. Shoot. Well, well, try the other one then. Three hmm. separate times over the two years of Stanley dialogue. walked through the green door. Then he pushed the number eight. Stanley pushed the number six. What? Stanley jumped in the river. Stanley stood on the snow. Stanley walked over the bridge. Still nothing. Hmm. I don't know. Well, in that case, I'll tell you what. You win. Congratulations. You did it. I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. Hmm. What do we do now? I don't... Stanley, where are you right now? Where were Where am I? I'm 
I'm trying now to look look at Stanley. Stanley. See how it's impossible for the player to do anything in this room. Perfect example of four level design. It's the kind of thing you pick up on intuitively. Fundamental understanding of good and bad game design. But of course, you being you. To solve it. No, yes. This I'm just going to make this easy on you. And finally, he pushed the number six. I don't know what pushing the number six has anything to do with. All right. Um, that's explored. Forget. Can I run in this game? I don't think I can run. There is no sprint. There's a crouch, but not a sprint. All right, what's up this way? War zone. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. <laughs> we realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. Eh, there's so many shooters. I don't think, are we really gonna be that offended? I don't think so. <laughs> Alien base, awesome. I certainly wouldn't be offended. Narrator emails. After the second trailer was sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. Hi, Mr. Nuri, I have a question for you, sir, and it is, what is your message for today? Sincerely, Harris. There's a skeleton inside of you. There are more skeletons in this world than humans. <laughs> well, they're not wrong. From Marius, a question brought forth by the intense passion of my soul. Am I Stanley? Are you spying on me? I don't know what I, why? How? Will the game feature Capybaras. Okay. Rain narrator, how do you stay in shape? Sincerely, Michael the Rock Martin. Are you gay? Of course. There's always somebody that'll ask that. Dink dunk. In the works, dear narrator, I appreciate the previous sentence where I wrote a sample. I appreciate the narrator. Stanley Crow will have an infinite quest. How many endings? If Stanley Crow is really going to let me go shopping, I hope it will have a fine selection of desert boots. How do you make a JRPG? How do you make the worst game ever? What is the difference between a duck? It's not a question. How's the game going? I hope it's as good or better than the first one. From a cool man. Are you a rock? This is weird. Did you tell me what the significance of the number 1112800 is? Well, the thing I want to know is, what would you do if Stanley entered any other rooms? <clears throat> For instance, on a scale of Max Ernst to Salvador Dali, how surreal will this game be? Were you born with a magnificent voice, or did you bargain with a magician to receive it? <laughs> wow, congratulation, congratulation, congratulation. Line with our previous hands, we're going to...
phishing email. Dear D Dead Strong Bad, how do you type with boxing gloves on? <laughs> okay, that is a reference to a, a web series starting in like early 2000s called Homestar Runner. And it's, it's actually a legit funny uh, web series. That's hilarious. Not spam. Hi, Mr. Neri. Okay. I think we've gone full circle there. Um, the lounge, an early version of the lounge. Whoa. Okay, it just keeps resetting to 15. The apartment timer. In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, I don't know, a uh, timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. I have not experienced the apartment ending. The cargo lift. The cargo lift was always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping into a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the option of the player falling to their death. Yeah, I haven't done that, but yeah, that's the thing. Second version is functionally the same as what's in the final game, but we wanted it to look more like a space where cargo is actually stored. Fair enough. This is so weird. Meeting room. There's the projector. Option one. First choice. Obey, disobey, lounge, staircase. Option, or two options. So this is one option. Two options. The other in entrance would be hidden depending on how you entered. What? That's three, one option. One doorway to the maintenance in the lounge. <laughs> Pardon me. Wow. Ah, uh, so, so let's see. One doorway to maintenance in the lounge. Or two doorways to maintenance. One doorway to maintenance in the lounge, the original back on track option. What? Oh, yeah, I think I remember that. Two confusion ending. Vent, what about this? The flow of hallways following the first two doors was important to get right since players will replay them so many times. We discussed a number of designs, but ultimately it was the simplest version that went out. So, the number one, or I don't know. Ugh. Zending levers. These levers were originally part of the zending. The player would pull a lever and the narrator would describe what color they had pulled. Interesting. Green and green. Zending model. The zending went through many iterations. This room represents the fourth, fourth version of the ending, and we thought it was complete, but decided to abandon and change it again shortly before launch. Game is now paused. Begin the game, resume the game, options, return to menu. Escape menu. For a long time, we had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Unfortunately, very few players realized this was what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everyone. <laughs> now, come on. I think they should have kept that. That would have been entertaining. Sending. 
this screenshot depicts an earlier version of the ending known as the Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. Interesting. Okay, now I'm back over here. Countdown desk. One of the desks from an early version of the countdown ending. Do it again. Do it again. Interesting. Uh, freedom ending. This is the freedom ending as it existed in beta. Pretty simple in design. Monitor room elevator. For time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up or down with the freedom above and countdown below. Banned this when players found it too difficult to remember that what was up and what was down and placed the two endings together instead. Interesting. Countdown room, an early version of the countdown room. Oh yeah, it's very different now. Uh, okay, that's the exit. Is there anything else that I see? Game design mock-up. This is the level that William, the level designer, sent Davey, the writer, as a kind of audition piece. The strength of this level got William hired to design the full game. Though much of the environment has changed, the basic layout from this mock-up is still in the game. Stanley's office. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November 2011, the second in March 2012, and the third in February 2013. So there's that one. There's this one. A little bit more space. Kind of reminds me of my um, uh, second full-time job. I had a very nice cubicle space. Plenty of space to work on. It was nice. Then, th then eventually things shrunk, and it was turned out more like this. Ish. <laughs> okay, I think. Yeah, I think we've seen all there is to see here. Uh, so um. What's this? Oh, this is the emails. Never mind. That's that. I was over here. Here we go. Here's the exit. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Okay. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <clears throat> the Stanley Parable, on or off? So not right now it's on. Let's see what happens when we turn it off. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Uh, but listen to me. No, 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 no. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Turn off your PlayStation. There's no other way to beat this. What? Person. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. No, 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 no. It'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time. No. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm assuming that was different on PC because it's it wouldn't it would have been on PC, not PlayStation. Oh my gosh, this is so bizarre. Okay. All of 
this co-worker? Ah. Uh. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yeah. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the trophy? Click a door five times? Is that all you think a trophy is worth? No, you no, didn't no, give no, me no, the trophy. Diet. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks? Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Now, here's the question. What happens if I do that same thing again and then I, like, quit the game? Dang it, now I want to find out. Ugh. <laughs> this game. Turn off your computers. What? Put received. What input? Uh, okay. Still ignoring the new new content. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yeah, I really am curious. So let's just bum rush through Yet, this. there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I like forcing the narrator to speed up. Wait. Yep, see? As long as you, as long as you, like, end, like, uh, restart the game, once you can get through this doorway which leads to the elevator which as we uh, figured out before it just plays music and sounds like it's going somewhere well, we just whispered Stanley that's weird Sorry, there's just part of me that enjoys that elevator music and just kind of hanging out in there. It's kind of weird. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books ah. off the shelf, looking behind ah. paintings, desperate for clues to his ah. situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible, terrible secret, secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Oh, right. 2845, sorry. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened <sighs> passageway. All right. There we go. Loading screen. This is interesting, though. The... Uh... The uh, chat is uh, awfully quiet tonight, other than Coffee Mom. But if there's anybody else watching, thank you for joining, of course. And oh gosh.
Oh, we have this. Hold on. Just realized this. The mature rating thing is still activated on the channel, which we don't really need right now. It's for everyone 10 and up, so yeah. I really see no reason to have the mature audience thing, so um, let me go ahead and deactivate that for a bit. I wonder if maybe um, that was activated for um, Lily's Horizon Zero Dawn streams. Well, I, th I think that, I don't know. I feel like that game's uh, rated T for teens. I don't know. Oh, boy. My computer is running a little bit slow. Let's see. Wow, we've got 118 followers. That is fantastic. Well, gosh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate all, all your support. Okay, well, Atherin forgot how to turn the mature setting on or off, so yeah. Because, you know, it'd be nice to have, you know, open it up to more viewers and whatnot when we're not streaming mature games. Oh, here we go. I found it. There we go. Let's see. I just need choices on call this week starting today. Oh, no. Okay. That is a bummer. Especially since I know he was uh, sick earlier in the week. That's no fun. Um, pause. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think we're good now. Good. Now. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Will anything different happen if I go this way? Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. If nothing new happens, then the I'll door behind him was not this shut. Thing. Stanley it's still had every opportunity to turn no around point. and get <laughs> back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. All right, here we go again. Whee!
now the narrator is going to kill me, or try to anyway. As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the, the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, <laughs> Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Welcome to the stream, Doc. Good to see you again. Um, I'm exploring some more uh, options here in the Stanley Parable. And yet um, it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? So I had just gone through this ending earlier, but like I got killed at the end of it, so I'm gonna see if there's when every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance. This lady was like, death becomes meaningless. Shut down your PlayStation. The That's the only way to get out of this. And I'm like, do you see that what? Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? All right, let's see if we can get out of here. Where's the exit? There it is. Actually, does anything, can I? When the button pops out, does it actually work? I, I, I didn't try it before. Button, 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 button. No, it's just there for show. Um, all right, let's give this another shot. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. All right. This time. Can you see? Can you see how much Let's they need one another? see if I can pause another? the game and just quit no, back to the menu, perhaps maybe. Not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Turn off your PlayStation. There's no other way to beat this game. Yeah. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time... Um... Sure. Let's quit to the menu. Does that give me a trophy? Or is that like the literal ending where there's... Somebody else was dictating my life? Sure, I've had that feeling before. No, no trophy. Uh, I still haven't gotten my trophy for clicking on... Let's see here. Yeah, click on door for... 35 times I hope it's not like they're not like tricking me by saying you have to click on door 430 five times and what they actually mean is 435 times like the number 435 not four yeah jeez click on door 20 times I mean, I could try it. Just sit there and click the door all day and all the live long day. I don't know. All right. Back to it. Even though the game promised trophies to Atherin, he failed to obtain them. I think Doc has is turned in, into the narrator, the chat narrator. <laughs> This is the story of a man named Stanley. 
Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what... Alright, let's go ahead and skip that. We've seen it before. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right, here we go. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the trophy? Click a door five times? Is that all you think a trophy is worth? No, 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 no. I, I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks? Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. I'm just going to keep clicking this door until something no, no, happens. No, no, I'm still not feeling it. I want this trophy to have meant something. See? It has to be a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle stand. You are getting some hustle, commitment. dang it. A willingness it's to go all the way in a matter of... Rapidly tapping the X button. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Oh, you shut your mouth there, Raider. Okay, now he wants 20 clicks on 417. All right, where's where's door 417? It's freaking narrator, gosh darn it. Here we go. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Oh my gosh. Let's see, 437. Was that back this way or was that going forward? That was going forward. Okay, good, good, good. Three, seven. Or am I going the wrong way? Hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I feel like it was back this way. Ah, here we go. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Okay, okay. 415, 10 clicks. You got it, narrator. Whatever you say. God. Now, back to door number 437. <laughs> I have not been to the new new content. I did the new content, but not the new new content. Let's see, how about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. Hey, Master Choice, welcome to the stream. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. How you feeling, buddy? Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. 419. Yep. Yep, I know there's a way to get up here. Come on. <laughs> yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. 416, all right. Oh, God. All right, narrator. Let's see, which one's door number 416? Six. Did I pass that up? Um, maybe it's this way. No. All right, narrator, you're gonna have to help me out here. Physically, I'm better parent. Mentally, I'm the wrath of God. Oh no. Oh boy. 
I am sorry things aren't going well, Master Choice. Sounds like you've been having a lot of troubles lately. Four one six. Where is door four one six? Is this door four one six? No. Uh, that's four one seven. That's new content. That's four one five. Where's door 416, dang it? We've got 417 and... And this is new content. Was this 416 at some point? Crap. Might be the do door behind 415. Oh, so this was 416? Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something Shh. very exciting to show you. No. Ah! <laughs> oh, sugar biscuits. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to Google it. Here we go. All right, you forced my hand. Stanley Parable. Number 416 is inside the new content door. Okay. Uh, let me try that. Aha! There you are. We've almost got it! Now the Jeez. copy machine, do that one again! <laughs> Okay, okay, I think we're good now. Um, back to the copy machine. The narrator really feels this is this is it. This is this has got to be it, man. He can feel it. Finish it off, Stanley. Five clicks on door four three zero. Here we go. Yes, we did it. Yay! Oh, wow. That's amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stan. Oh my gosh. Nothing to hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. <laughs> that was so ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had to go through so much to, to, um, fulfill, excuse me, fulfill the conditions for a trophy. That said, I had to do one thing. I did what it said, and then the game's like, mm, no, that's not enough. More. Okay, now now do this. Okay, now do this. No, I'm gonna need more. Now more, yes, more, more, more. <laughs> yes, we're, we've almost got it. That's, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. <gasps> of a Tuesday <sighs> whenever in the future that, that I have a, a Tuesday off now you can do the new new content I don't know man there's still some things that I want to try Oh, set all settings sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. Well, I can do that on my own time. I won't, I won't bore you with that. Um, let me try. Uh, 
I mean, if you think the new new content is worth getting into right now, I mean, we can try it. Sure, why not? All right, here we go. To the loading screen. Gosh, that was funny. It's like once once the narrator narrator was being so enthusiastic about it, then I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling it now. We can do this. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. What? Oh! Okay. Two. Yes, you see? Isn't this far superior to a measly port with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Oh, there you go. We're playing the sequel. Welcome, Investor Showcase. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress sequel. and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Now this has a four on it, though. That's just marked two, 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 two. Isn't it great that um, Germany has to be the eyed one out and and call their number two Zwei? Right. Really, Germany? You had to go with the Z sound? Bunch of post-it notes here. Uh, photos, off-painting. Okay. Hey, Asbath, welcome to the stream. Glad you could join us tonight. Um, so far, you missed uh, one of the endings, kind of, I guess. It's hard to tell with, sometimes with this game. And then me going for a trophy and realizing how crazy the trophy is. But it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Meeting at 2 p.m. Yeah, I like that. So now we've walked into the new, new content zone, and they're like, you know what? We were disappointed with the Ultra uh, Deluxe Edition of Stanley Parable, so you know what? We're just going to go above and beyond. We're giving you the sequel right now. Here it is. New content is out. New content part two is in. Old is... Plus busted equals new content. New hotness. Cool red section of the chart. Boring sections of the chart. I could clip the trophy part. That that that'd be good. Don't talk to me before I've had my sequel. <laughs> new mug. More TSP, better TSP. Oh, the Stanley Parable. Win, win. One, two. Sequential mindshare. One, two. Color red, leverage holistic value. 
paradigm shift synergy, brick and mortar approach, and develop client centric marketing. Oh, there you go. There's all the different logo ideas. Thanks for attending my meeting, slide six. <laughs> Oh, there's not just one Stanley, there's two Stanleys. <laughs> Why? Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. Okay. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, two arms, two legs, question mark. Who took the red marker? Me. <laughs> the Stanley two, the Stanley Parable two is the sequel to the Stanley Parable. Is the Stanley, jeez. Oh, Two sequels are good. Portal 2, Half-Life 2, Batman Arkham Asylum 2, City, Divinity Original Sin 2, Doom 2, Aladdin 2, Return of Jafar, fair enough, Dark Souls 2. <laughs> Funny thing is I've only played one of these uh, games on here. That's Portal 2. I never got into Half-Life. That was a PC thing and I'm... I'm more of a console gamer. I played Ar um, Arkham Asylum, just not Arkham City. That was, that was, um, that was DK more, I think. Divinity Original Sin 2. Or was that? Doom 2. I played Divinity Original Sin, the first one. I never finished it. I've seen Aladdin 2 Return of Jafar. I don't think I've played Doom 2. I don't think. I've played like all three levels of the original Doom, like all three chapters. And I've never played Dark Souls, any of them. Anyway. So many twos, so many twos. This way to the show floor. All right. Oh, here we go. I'm a valued investor, I think. I bought the game. Why is there a bus here? Can I sit down? New features. Uh, twos. Actually, can I get on the bus? Wouldn't that be crazy if I could get on the bus? I can't get on the bus. That's disappointing. Holy jeez. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Such as... Exclusive, the button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. No way. Hear your name in the game. <sighs> All right, I'm super curious. Is it just going to say Stanley? Please, no screenshots. <laughs> Whole new office. Red is the new orange. Oh, that's that sound things make when like somebody's making a phone call with their cell phone or something or their or their cell phones ringing the new updated ray trace more of the same but in a good way sequel to the features new content new ideas 
The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. I gotta know. I have gotta know. Oh, the baby is all growing up. <laughs> Consistent quality with just the right amount of change. I gotta know. Can you show me? Oh. Epilogue. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? So yes, sure. yes, it will go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. What the heck? Free, new, plus easy, trophy. I can't believe it's that simple. Oh, you fudge. There's too much going on in this room. I can't handle it. <laughs> Alright, I, I gotta do the name thing, though. Enjoy the new feature. Let's do it. For the Stanley oh. Parable 2, Close the doors I ask me. myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Remember when places had like orange carpeting or orange flooring like this? And orange chairs they don't do that anymore was it ever like cool I mean it was an in thing for a while but it wasn't really you know something to look at but it's kind of weird it just gives that nostalgic feeling when you see it I don't know road to the perfect button too small just right too big All right, here we go, moment of truth. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Try it here. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see? What a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again, do it again. Jim. Ooh. It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Wow. Jeez. Jim. Whoa there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the gym button away. Otherwise, soon <laughs> you'll start to lose all sense of who you Jim. actually are. Jim. Jim. <laughs> You're not going to take it away before I press it three more times. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, that's good. All right, let's see what else this sequel has to offer. <clears throat> I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would okay. actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Office decorations, Stanley Parable reassurance bucket, the buttons. Oh, here's all the merchandise. I saw the new content. This t-shirt is the best new feature. The end is never the end again. Back two doors. Hmm. 
some screenshots. Let's go to somewhere. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? Um, Happy 12th Birthday, Stepneys? <laughs> okay, uh, um, this is weird. Get well someday. Well, I mean, you know, you'd always hope that somebody would get well someday, and not everybody has a step niece. Happy 12th birthday. That's very specific. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Oh. Happy 12th birthday, step niece, it is. Gee, thanks, narrator. Oh, and there's a balloon stuck down there. That's funny. I wonder if that happens every time. Well, now I can't click any of the buttons. Oh my gosh, and look. <sighs> or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Ugh. Jeez, dude. <laughs> Collectibles. Free, new, and easy trophy. I can't believe it's that simple. Get it here. All right, here we go. See? Trophy. Let's go get it. Free trophy. Get yours right now. Pull the lever. Receive your new trophy. No more steps. It just works. Get yours right now. <sighs> this is for my buddy Dark Knight. He's going to hate me if he sees that. <laughs> now, here's something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the trophy will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay. It's a little shady, but okay. Sure, why not? Wait, is that a case with... radioactive materials in it? That's a bit concerning. Uh, test trophy locked. Uh, all right, well, here we go. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the trophy is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Open up, dang it. Give me my freaking trophy. Pull me, please. Does that have to do with um, test trophy description? Replace this. Test trophy, please. Come on. This game is... So, that was false advertising. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Oh, here we go. Jump. The jump circle. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Really? Narrator, I have to say, I'm pretty disappointed with this sequel so far. Oh gosh, you are here. Well, 
that's good to know. There's an infinite hole. Ooh. So wait, hold on. Where did I just come from? Can you find them? Collect them all. All right. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Okay. That doesn't sound fun, but... What the heck? Why... As if this collectible is so awesome and powerful and amazing. Uh, well, okay, was that it? Are there more collectibles around here? What's... God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Oh my gosh. This guy. Infinite hole. Oh, here we go. Let's see. This is the one with the balloons. Yeah. Time death, in time like infinity, distant future, distant space time, distant past, falling, whole like infinity. Okay, sure. Opening, rim, surrounding area, depth, infinite. Whole entrance, infinity. Okay, I've seen that diagram in, before. Infinite whole chart. More whole, whole, depth, space, question mark, science. Or educational use only. It just keeps going. Okay. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Okay. Okay, I can't go behind it at all, I guess. No, wait. No, there's a fence. Okay. Um, well, that's kind of creepy. It's kind of reminding me of the ring. All right, let me do this and then I gotta take a break. Hopefully this isn't truly infinite. Or we're gonna be here a long time. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Why? What happens if I don't? Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Oh, is no. It a very, very deep hole. To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep <laughs> oh, no. hole. It is. Is it infinite? 
I don't know, is it? It sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. <laughs> you found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and cheat, you're puffs. so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? If that works okay. for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Okay, that's fair. Thank you, narrator, for being honest. Oh, jeez. Great, now. I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven. <laughs> I was right. The problem is you. Hey, thank the you for following. The problem is that you like holes too much. Welcome to Arcade normal, Hooligans. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sword. Employee 432, good oh. to see you. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this Greetings time? Greetings from employee 427. I feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. I am doing well. Uh, welcome to the stream. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. Have you though? Gosh, how could I have guessed <laughs> you're back in the hole? It's just like the elevator. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try Interesting. something. Interesting. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Okay, I like this experiment. Well, there it is. Oh. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. Strangely enough, I could see somebody starting a cult in Animal Crossing. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. So if I teleport out, will the hole, like, not, will it no longer exist? Ah, uh, okay. You, you, you drank the Kool-Aid? Uh-oh. Hmm. Is the, um... Teleport button not working? Yes, narrator, the teleport sure? button is not working. Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose. I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole. I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the whole have a wonderful rest of your friendship. Jeez, narrator, that's harsh. So I'm trapped in this hole forever? Oh! Okay, 
Why did the music get all ominous? What? This is interesting. Change your perspective? your perception no worries employee 432 TSP and thank you for following, much appreciated, and I hope to see you again. Take care. some beats and rhythms in there come on Somebody play this backwards so what makes sense. This is so weird. They recorded this stuff. This is so weird. What happens when I change my reality? The teleport button just became the change yourself button, so let's see what happens. 
What the? Okay. Seems you had sort of dozed off there. Dozed the off? But we can't have that, Stanley. Because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle What? Let me out. No. Are they seriously okay? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Yes, I already have. Okay. That was an experience, to say the least. Ha. Huh. Well, I'm going to take a break. Because I need my head to... Get... Yeah. Yeah, break time. I'll be back in a little while. Yeah.
back. Break took a little longer than usual, so I apologize. But while I'm back from the break. Hold on, let me mute myself for a second. I'm about to make a bunch of noise. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have myself a cookie. Uh oh. I somehow became blurry. There we go. Not bad. A little chewy. But good. Mmm. Okay, my brain has refreshed from that weirdness that I just experienced. So how's everybody doing? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That is a good cookie. Doing okay. Doing okay. Mm. Glad the week has come to an end. Yeah, it was just one of those long weeks. Kind of felt like it was never going to end. So. Hmm. Okay. All right, come on. Let's get this rolling. All right. What have I not taken a look at yet? This is the epilogue room. I remember that. I know, 119 followers. It's fantastic. I just saw two people join the stream just now and then they left. But that's okay. <laughs> Settings World Champion. Okay. Can I only get through this door if I did the settings world champion trophy? Mmm. Oh. So chewy. Okay, so what was this trophy again? Set all settings sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. really necessary to have that much opacity available that widespread I feel like they did this on purpose I 
hope it's not a situation where I have to apply it each time. Yeah, I guess it does know. This is the story of a man named Stanley. This is the story of a man named Stanley. This is the story. I hope this actually works. This is the story of a. Oh, it's the elevator music. I love the elevator music. better work or I'm going to be very disappointed. Alright, I think that's it. I have a feeling like I'm going to have to apply it. I'm going to have to go in, apply the new setting, leave. Go in, apply the new, a, a new setting, leave for every single number. <sighs> that's crazy. I might have to Google it just to make sure that's what they mean, but for crying out loud, dude. All right, you said... Wait a minute. Now that was with the way to the infinite hole. I believe it was over here was the place that I didn't get to yet. Is my microphone working okay? Yeah, yeah it is, okay. Just wanna make sure. Did they reset the balloons? Nope. Still the happy birthday, happy 12th birthday, Stepneys. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind. Where's the and bucket? Heart. It's true. Oh. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal, and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Okay. The reassurance bucket. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? Uh, All this and more sure. await you in the Stanley Parable, too. Okay. I have a bucket now. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't nice. already.
Did the button come back or is it gone? I'm curious. Yeah, it's gone. All right. I wonder if it's possible to, um, I wonder if it's possible to dump the bucket in the infinity hole. <clears throat> Just curious. Oh, they're not going to let me back in. I guess it's uh, behind some caution tape. I still want my trophy. Yeah, I already did that. Yeah, I think we I think we've looked at everything that we can look at. Okay. Well. All right. Is... Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Yes. Whoa. That is some red. Please, no screenshots. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. Okay. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait. Maybe that's it. Oh, boy. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it Our would need a really, so. really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. And of course, it's going to start over from the beginning. What? No. What? Oh. Stanley Parable 2. Okay. Whoa, that's trippy. Okay. Begin the game. Okay. Is, is it going to be different or is it just going to be more of the same?
This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked oh, for a company God. in a big building where he was employee number 427. The balloons! Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Wow. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul lifting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. <clears throat> something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, oh my gosh. or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Gosh darn it, the freaking balloons. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Uh, well, I, hmm. I guess we're doing this. Oh, there's the bucket. <sighs> Wait a minute. What is this doing here? Stanley picked up the bucket. I wonder I wonder if you if you interact with that computer screen every time you do the playthrough you get some kind of I don't know something happens interesting oh there's one of the balloons in a box there's the solitaire on the screen okay I've never seen that in the game before <clears throat> until I went through that museum there's another balloon. Stan Stanley picked up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Um... I don't know what to do. Sure, we'll go to the left. I have my bucket with me. I feel reassured. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Maybe. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The what? broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of I jealousy. I actually did when I walked in. Day, like... This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's yeah. supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be. Given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. No. We're getting into 
name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? Like you're losing that your, your mind relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. How dare you insult my bucket. This bucket has been just like a bucket to me. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Okay. Here we go. Whoa. There. Now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. I really wanted to set the bucket down in here. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, oh, and I'm no. going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. Okay. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, sure. if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. Cool. Can I leave now? You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. All right then. Uh, narrator does not like the broom closet. Got it. Okay, I'm leaving. Jeez. Dude. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Am I gonna get a different ending if I'm just with the bucket the whole time? It's down here, by the way. <gasps> it's one of the collectibles! You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. <gasps> Remember, no <laughs> reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Thanks, narrator. It's through here. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his illness. boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but no. said nothing at all. Well, that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's but it bucket, says perhaps. Property of How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. 
And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh gracious! He what the? Without my bucket, I've gone Actually, truly I'm... mad. Where what? is it? I must find it. What? Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's What's me. happening? The bucket. Could what? it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Oh gosh, this is... Me, Stanley, find me. He had to find the bucket. Very he had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, it froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. What? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and oh. walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. <laughs> of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. What? Well, I guess that's one of the endings, and I have a feeling the bucket was only, is only in that ending if you grab the bucket. <sighs> and here we are again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, where is that computer that says awaiting input? Oh, figurine finders committee. <laughs> meeting today in the meeting room. There's the bucket again. Oh. I didn't miss the computer, did I? Or is it going to be on one of the other computers? No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yeah, that's that's basically it. I, jeez. Is this, what, is this what the rest of this stream is going to be? Me and the bucket? The adventure of Stanley's bucket? And it still has the stickers on it, too. That's the funny thing. <sighs> Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Alright, cool. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Let's go to the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. 
Wow. Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's the usual. All right. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Sure. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. I can't remember if I've gone down this maintenance elevator before. Let's find out. All right, Bucket, let's go on an adventure. Me and my Bucket. It's like, oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place what eventually. What? The... We care about you, Stanley. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. What it's is... this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. There's a, there's a baby. It's the broom closet again. Well, I could dump off the bucket in here, but you won't let me, so. Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now oh as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Okay, maybe I should, maybe I should have left the mature content warning back up. The internet said this game was for players 10 and up. I don't know. Although there's, they weren't exactly like, you know, swear words or anything like that. Or, but, I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to dwell on it. Forward. Property of Stanley. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. Oh my god. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the it's cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Well, I don't seem to have any... Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. 
I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... destroyer my prized creation you had so much potential we were going to do such marvelous things with you tell such spell-binding stories about you all of it squandered now goodbye new friend for the moment in time that you were here you were magnificent all this because of a bucket Okay. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently this thing could not handle the bucket destroyer being destroyed. <laughs> oh, wow. Direction. of the bucket Okay, well, yeah, that that actually happened. That's interesting. Huh. Well, this has been a very interesting night. To say the least. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> mm. 
That's right, last time they said I could, um... <laughs> Who knows, Asbath? I, I don't know. And then again, the, uh, the... The people that work at PlayStation might get sick of people reporting that problem t to them. Oh my goodness. So last time I booted up the game, it said that I could enter whatever time that I wanted. It was so proud of me for entering, taking the time to enter a time instead of just saying it's 12 a.m. and then just going forward. So it said I could enter whatever time I wanted. So you know what? I would like it to be... I would like it to be... 9... 9.30. 9.30 a.m. I think that's a good good time, you know. Depending on... I mean, for me anyway, that'd probably be... I don't know, probably by the time I'd either be finishing or in the middle of breakfast. So that sounds like a good time. See, <laughs> the day hasn't quite started yet, and there's time to think, hmm, what do I need to do today? Because I like that part of the day, because thinking about when, what I'm going to do, and what time I'm going to do it, and all that stuff. So, Or could you simply not resist giving me the correct time again? After all, I know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, now I'm curious how accurate 9.30 a.m. is. Let's use another slider to find out. How accurate is 9.30 a.m.? Pretty inaccurate. <laughs> it's 9.30 p.m. here. In fact, yeah, I set the time for 9.30 a.m., but not. So yeah, that's extremely inaccurate. You know, can I just say, regardless of the accuracy of the clock, I'm having a great time adjusting these settings. I feel like I'm learning more about you and how you like things to be set. Sorry. It's good to collect data. I wish we had more sliders, but we've gone through all the sliders I have. Hmm, perhaps I can invent some new sliders to gather new data on you. Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, let me whip a, a couple new ones up. Should be ready by the next time you put up the... There is so much depth to this game. Oh my gosh. And I have a good feeling the next time I boot up the game, they're going to have more sliders for me. And they're like, oh, okay, what time is it? What day of the year is it? What year is it? Jeez. Oh, Add the seconds this time instead of just the hours and minutes. Is it sunny outside? Is it dark outside? Wow. All right, so am I starting the original game or am I starting the sequel? This, is, this game is... Oh, it's still the Stanley Parable 2. So yeah, they just added all those things to the game and it's just, I can interact with them if I choose. So the bucket is complete, completely optional. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is so freaking weird. Wow. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Are the balloons still there? Stanley yep. worked for a... All right. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. What is where... where are the balloons all of his still around? workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, there's the bucket. I kind of just want to leave the bucket be this time. Or I could, this time I could try destroying the bucket. And see what happens. Yeah, maybe I'll do that just for fun. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay, so yeah, I'll just go ahead and enter the door on the left. It's 
fine. Get into the same place either way. <gasps> what? What? This is act the act. It's the meeting about the collectibles. They said they were meeting in this room, and sure enough. There's one plank to follow ease. To allow ease of access point fence. Construct bridge to allow collection of shiny fruit. Retrieve Chris's remains from warehouse floor. Construct new structurally sound bridge. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, there's that room from the fireplace. This is so weird. Places to search. Oh, this tells me where, what collectibles I've already. A large room, lots of boxes. I know where that is. Somewhere both red and blue. I know where that is too. Nearby our fireplace. I know where that is. I think, or was that like a, no, maybe that wasn't the right place. I don't know. There will be a reward for finding them all. It's, they, he, the narrator said there, there isn't a reward. Now this is saying there is. And then people responding saying, stop kidding yourselves. There will be cleaning of this wall required. I want to go home. I want them so much. Lies, who are you? 666, lol. Lol, looks like 427, ha ha ha. Gotta collect them all. God, this this game, what is with this game? There's, di there's different mugs on the table now, I think. Figure finding committee. The F file is confidential. Trust the completionist instinct. You mean the choice instinct? <laughs> Why wouldn't they just tell us something will happen? This investigation, this room, they feel pointless, to be honest. Weird spinning figurines. The ideas. What do they want? Our data. Stock options? Money? Should we make them employees? Interns? Maybe? Yes? They do kind of look like 427. A quarterly success? Why floating? Dreams? Magnets? Training exercise by... Whatever that says. More money if sold together. Can we sell them? Obviously. Potential liability. Do we need contracts for them? Non-disclosure agreement. Bonus stuff. What we forgot. What we know. What we don't yet. What we don't know yet. Maybe we are the collectibles. Source of levitation. How can how we can find them? To whom it may concern, I managed to pick up sounds unusual to our regular office ambiences, local audio sources using an array of cardio and microphone. Clues provided by employee 416. Can you do it? Red room? Give you good luck. There's pictures of the figures. Jeez. Where are they? Please do not leave the office before reporting back to any on any new findings. Teamwork and communication are of great importance during the unprecedented time of investigation. Thank you. A large room, lots of boxes. I know where that is. Somewhere both red and blue. There's that area that has the red and blue doors that the narrator says go through the, um, what was it? Go through the blue door or the red door? No, it was the red door. A nearby or fireplace. I don't know if I've legitimately... It 
See, the <laughs> what sucks is they're like making me want to find all the collectibles now. But I have a feeling the narrator's just be like, hey, I told you there was no reward. That never changed. Oh my gosh, this game, it messes with your head so much. What does this chart say? Pieces of evidence. What is that? I can't read the back of that. No. Large room, lots of boxes. Some are both red and blue. By a fireplace, a private but smelly place for an important person. The bathroom. All right, I know where one of them is. All right, I'm not going in the broom closet again. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's. See now, I'm itching to find all the freaking collectibles. Dang it. Yep. There's another. Oh my gosh. I've got the feeling money's for stealing, but not yours, of course. Say, that's a lovely purse. Say, that's a lovely purse. Interesting. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Oh, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. This game, oh my gosh. Okay, now here, this place has a fireplace in it, although it's not lit. Okay, that's not opening up this time, that's fine. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It Wait would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. No, the right. two that of them was. were okay. inseparable. Jeez. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct now. code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Okay, so no figurine here. Oh! oh. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by I one? don't know. I'm sure it will come to me. I'm sure it will. And I, pr I pretty much know where the other two are. It's just a matter of going to get them. But... I'm already past the point where I do get them. I have to start over. Uh, but yeah, I'll do like one more finish of this and then I'll probably call it a night. I'm tired. The only reason I feel okay right now is because I took some medicine. The elevator earlier. raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself yeah. together, if not for, for the, the bucket. bucket. Yeah. Soothing him. Comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. All right, I already know what happens with the whole escape thing. The 
lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the, the bucket, bucket both wondered to themselves. Jeez. <laughs> uh, the monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Yeah, okay, anyway. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter, his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except, except for, the for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Uh-huh. Guess I'm gonna have to use my imagination for that one. Hmm, I wonder what that door is all about. I see a sliver of light. All right. Well, should we just go ahead and and shut down the mind control facility? Mind controls idle, awaiting. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens when we get a nice, good ending. When at last they came to the source of the, the room's bucket. power, Stanley and the bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Sure, let's do it. Whatever makes the bucket happy. I think this will make the bucket happy. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. What? True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and to be... What? Wait. What? What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Uh -oh. Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even what? the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket. Uh, uh. Needed the soothing warmth of the bucket. No. Let me out. No, no, no. 
Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be Let's okay with that. Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Is the bucket like the one ring or something? My precious? Start over from the beginning, yep. <sighs> okay, that was weird. <laughs> the bucket changes everything. Why? <laughs> All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Uh, Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Wow. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, and there's the bucket. It's back. Put received. Uh, yeah, anyway. Happy 12th birthday, Stepneys. Good lord. <sighs> yep, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Choice, I have a feeling I could play this game for. <laughs> See you next week, Jim. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling I could play this game for another few hours if I really had the energy and the time for it, but yeah.